Hello, welcome back to Gordon's channel. In this lesson, we are going to learn Chart.js, which is a library for drawing charts with JavaScript. So first of all, we will go to get the URL for the content delivery. So first of all, let's go into the official website of Chart.js and let's click into Get Started. So in Get Started page, we will have a link to the Chart.js CDN and after clicking into it, We'll go to the JS Deliver CDN. So here uh, they have provided a number of files, but what we need is the chart.min.js, the minified version. So we just click into this icon and choose copy URL. And after copying URL, we can go to our project directory. And let's in the head, we can uh, add the uh, script here, script with the SLC. So for importing, here we will paste the URL which is copied to our clipboard. And after that, we will add the defer keyword so that it is load after the page elements are load and does not block the rendering block. So let's save it. And now if we check our website, we see that there is no uh, nothing yet because we need to uh, copy the script into it. So here, the script is, first of all, we need to have a canvas element in our web page. So let's copy this one and go to our HTML page. And uh, when you have, we have header, footer, and the main for the uh, SEO. And inside the main, we have session. And here, let's paste the canvas. So let's uh, keep it as default, uh, for example, first. And we have an ID with the my chart. The chart is a camel case when we have a width and a height attribute. If you save it, now we should. Uh, Still not see anything yet, but now let's go to uh, copy this script into our JavaScript file. So we should, uh, here we should create a new JavaScript file called chart.js. And after that, we can go to uh, paste this here. And let's not use the var keyword because it is outdated. So let's use the let keyword. So, each there. So, for the context, it is get element by ID my chart and then get context 2D. And then we have the my chart, which, which is the new chart instance. So, we need to have a new chart instance and uh, we the pass two arguments into it. The first one is the context and the second one is the configuration. So, uh, the, the first one is the context, which if we have get here. And the second one is a whole JavaScript object from here to here. So we have a whole JavaScript object. And after saving, now we should uh, go to import this JavaScript file to our web page. So inside the head, we should uh, import it our own JavaScript after the CDN of the library. So we should add here. After saving, now we have an error here, which is cannot get context of now. So we should go to uh, check why. So here we have the context of my chart. And if we go to our website, we have the ID my chart. So we need to check. So now, because we don't have add a defer keyword here, so after adding the default keyword, so this CDN will be loaded after the whole web page is loaded. And for our own JavaScript, we need to add the default keyword too, so that uh, the, the scripts are loaded after this library is loaded. So now we have this uh, uh, part here. And now we can see that the size is over large. But actually, uh, we have set a width and height. So this comes to the next learning objective, which is how to style the chart or how to size the chart. So first of all, if we go to our web page and click into uh, the inspect, we can see that it has some uh, width and height here. And if we try to add some class to it, so instead of uh, using attribute here, we can say add a class to it. For example, class equals to chart. And we can go to the uh, style sheet and add a dot chart 
with a width and if we add it now we can see that the chart is still not uh, resizing correctly so if we if we try to okay now first of all the chart is already not oversized previously it is oversized and now it is like this and now what we can do is we can see that if we try to resize it and uh, there is a resize uh, event so the, the canvas is actually resizing itself according to the uh, document width but here why why it is not uh, as we have uh, assigned which is 50 viewport width this is reason is this chart is based on a uh, resize based on its parents so we need to add a container for the chart so here we need to add a division and we need to uh, put the canvas as a child of a container and now this chart class should be uh, applied on the container so now we can see that uh, the chart is of 50 viewport width because this is uh, we have size on the container and the JavaScript, the canvas library will, uh, the chart.js library will resize it based on its container. So now if we try to resize the page, uh, the container will be half of the page. And when the container is half of the page, then the chart will be resized according to its container. And here, there's one more uh, point to note here. So if we try to zoom in, so if we zoom in the page, we see that all our content becomes larger and the text of our um, chart becomes larger. So it is zooming in nicely. And if, for example, we use a um, fixed, uh, fixed uh, pixel here, for example, 200 pixels, if we use it this way, when we resize it, we see that when we resize it, the chart, the text does not res resize uh, accordingly, but actually the whole uh, canvas resize like an image and there is some uh, bird here. So this is the interesting point. So if we use a fixed if we use a fixed pixel here, then the chart will not uh, resize nicely. So it is better to use a uh, relative relative unit here. For example, 50 viewport width. And if you use a 50 viewport width, the size is not going to uh, deform. It is still going to be half of the page, but the text will uh, uh, zoom in with a larger size. The text will enlarge. So this is a better way to style it with a responsive unit, viewport units. And the first thing is, suppose we want to import some data from the API. So for example, if uh, Okay, so for example, we have a uh, API here. So I have defined an API, which is an express server with some cross holder. So this is listening to a uh, 3000 port and uh, on getting the uh, route, we will check the cross origin. And if it is the 5500 port, then I will send the response of an array of JSON object. So it will be uh, list an array of object with the date attribute and some values and the number attribute so let's uh, so if we try to access it with the website with a browser then we can see that localhost 3000 will return this uh, JSON so it is an array of object with date and number property and now we try to apply it on our Node.js on our on our chart.js demo so let's uh, make it a function, draw a chart. So we don't want to draw at the beginning before we have the data. So here, this is the function draw chart. And let's uh, close it here. And now if we use the reformat it, then it is indentation is fixed. And now let's create another function, which is a synchronous function which is the load data. And this load data, we will fetch some uh, data from the local host, this one. So we will fetch data from local host and we will use the chain, so dot then. So the response is a JSON. So we will use 
the response.json method first, and then we should uh, let's console log it. So now the response is uh, JSON passed, and now let's console log it. So after saving, we will go to the console. Heck. Uh, let me see. No, we have not called the function yet. So let's call it load data. So call the function. And we can see that we have uh, the J the response, which is this one. So we have the an array with the date and number. So now we need to uh, check our scripts. So for the uh, values, it is here inside the data, data set, and then data. But for the label, for the text, it is here. So let's store it into the keys and the values so this is the keys the values so here we need to check the response dot uh, keys so keys equals to response dot is an array so we use the map object and the map the map function we will call the object and the uh, Object dot here we use the page and here we have the values which is the spawn dot map object object dot number now we can call the draw data draw chart and we need to modify it so it will not be red blue yellow green but instead it will be the keys for the data, it will be the values. So now we can see that we have uh, we, uh, we, we uh, invent our chart. So now it becomes of the uh, date with the value, which is from our import 23, 16, 27, something. And here, if we want to change this legend, we can go to uh, here, label. So it becomes, for example, temperature in Celsius. For example, and what's what's next is that we actually have a large number of types of chart. So apart from a bar chart, we can also have line chart. So the usage is change the type when we initialize this instance. So if we go to our JavaScript, and here if we change our type to line, now it becomes a line chart. And we can also change it to radar chart. Okay, let's let's do it this way. So, so let's create some other uh, chart. So chart two, uh, no, yeah, ID chart two, chart three, chart four. Okay, and here let's go to uh, make it uh, customize it. So instead of ETA, we can. Um, Put the seed context and the type into it as a uh, uh, argument. So here we need to get more than one type context. So we have context two, three, four. It is getting my chart two, my chart three, my chart four. So here we are drawing chart with uh, context one, next one, and the type is bar chart. Then the if alternate up and then context two, context three, next four. So we can have line chart and then for example, chart, donut chart, donut chart. So if we save it now, oh, ctx1 is not defined. So yeah, I don't need to the ctx1. Let's see. So now we have we have the context. Oh, the other chart is not showing. Let me why. Uh, so if we don't use the if you change it here, I one uh, is changed, and if it oh uh, yeah here, so here we need to call it. So we need to contact and then the type 
So now we can see that we have uh, the, this one. The first one is a bar chart and then a uh, line chart. And then we have the pie chart and pie chart. So we can swing it, swing it back to 100. And we can see that we have the pie chart here and a donut chart here. So the difference is between a pie chart and a donut chart is that pie chart is of a whole setup and donut chart has a whole inside. And now we can also try some other chart, for example, bubble chart, which is for three dimensional data. So we have the X dimension, Y dimension, and also the radius. So the data will be uh, X, Y, and then R. And for the scatter, we have the scatter chart, which is for checking the density, which part has more relationship. And now we also have this radar chart. The radar chart is used to uh, present which attribute has uh, attribute of an item and it is mainly used for comparison. So for example, if I change this to a radar chart, save it, you can see that this is a radar chart. And now what can we do if we want to uh, compare? So we need to have more than one set of data, isn't it? So here, how do we have more than one set of data? And the, the, the solution is very simple. So if we go to our data, our options, we see that we have a whole options here, from here to here. And now we have the type, we have the data, and inside data, we have data sets. So we have an S here. So this is an array and with some uh, object here. So actually, we can uh, separate it. So if we uh, separate in this way, it becomes more obvious. So this array, we have the first object and we can have one more object. So for example, I just ignore this coloring, the styling, just use the uh, data. Let's create some data, for example, uh, 25, For example, like this. So now you can see that we have a second set of data here. So this is uh, how to find more than one set of data. So we just add more to the data sets. And if you want to style the, the second set, we need to just uh, do this for the colors and background colors. Okay. So this is how to use ArcGIS. And I hope you like this lesson. Thank you. Bye bye.